Good morning. Good morning. Everyone move forward. We have a special treat today. And I would like to get started. Yes, so good to see you all today, Tuesday morning. Um, I am so honored that this is all about the universe unfolding today. We are visiting here for one hour with Mama Charlotte O'Neill. Mama Charlotte O'Neill resides in Tanzania, East Africa. She is from Kansas City, Missouri. That, oh, there you go, there you go. And uh, was one of the original Black Panthers. As if you remember, we got to visit with Elmer Dixon, who was the founder of the Black Panther Party in Seattle uh, earlier this month, uh, last month. But today we are visiting with Charlotte O'Neill, who was a founding Black Panther in Kansas City. Uh, unfortunately, her life uh, direction changed by escaping the United States and living in Tanzania. In 1972, she fled with her husband, she escaped with her husband. We've been talking about this term, and maybe she'll be able to explain it to you. What is the difference between fleeing and escaping? So she escaped um, and moved to Algiers, which was a headquarters of the Black Panther Party. She then um, settled in Tanzania, and I'll just say briefly how the roundabout of her story was that her ancestors actually come from Tanzania. And she has been living there now for more than 40 years, actually almost 50 years, since 1972. Uh, gave birth to two children of her own, but has an orphanage of more than 30 children who she has raised. Um, and she is a gardener. This is the most exciting part. Last week we met with Michael Twiggs in hydroponics. He doesn't use any dirt to grow his, his food. Uh, Mama Charlotte has a farm, a green farm, in which organic soil and foods are grown and, um, and, and provided to the community. And she receives students from all over the world to stay with her. And um, they have actually dormitories where they, you can live and, um, and learn this craft so that you bring it back to the hilltop. So I want you to listen carefully to our, our next speaker. But most importantly, she is an artist. She's an artist of many kinds. She is an artist of the visual arts. She is an artist of the spoken word. She is a brilliant storyteller. Um, she is a musician, she sings, she has a original instrument, African instrument that she has developed that actually only women, very few women have ever been allowed to use and she has mastered the instrument. We hope she'll play for us today. Very good. But now I want to tell you why I brought her to you. As you, most of you may know, I am the author of a book called The Stolen Ones and How They Were Missed. And this story has, was written in 2009, but I got the story in the year 2000, when I took seven women to Kenya, East Africa. And we were having a beautiful luncheon in the backyard of our hostess, and the, um, an elder came, and my friend had a photo album. She was showing people pictures of, of African-American culture in the United States, and she's from Seattle, so she was saying, this is an African-American school, and this is an African-American church, and this is an African-American club, and the elder stops her and says, wait a minute, you keep calling yourselves African-American. Where from Africa do you come from? And, of course, we couldn't answer that because we didn't all know where we came from. We told her Alex Haley traced his roots, but everybody has not been able to trace their roots. And even I can maintain that today. Um, though this was in 2000, before the DNA testing was really advanced. Um, we told her that, you know, people were dragged from all over Africa, not just 
Ghana and the coastlines of Africa. And that it was a, a crazy movement that there were not records kept. And she gets this epiphany and she said, oh, you must be the stolen ones. So we asked her about the stolen ones and she told us this story. And what she wanted me to know most of all was that people in her village, see, when she was a young child, she learned the names of her ancestors, but she was always taught, never forget the stolen ones. And in her village, it was a young girl who had gone to the market and just never came back home. But what she wanted me to know was that people looked for her and they were so worried about her and they searched for her for not weeks, but months, okay? And as I heard that story, it changed me. Now, I don't wanna say anything more, except that I met Mama Charlotte a few years ago, gifted her with my book, and she wrote to me a few months ago and asked me, she had a, a vision of a film, and she asked me if she could um, show that film. And so today, we are going to premiere that film for you. Yes! I know, I know. Now, so um, I'm going to ask Mama Charlotte to say hello to you, but we will entertain her with her explanation after the film. And maybe if there's one or two questions, we'll do a quick give back and by 11, We've got to be on the road to Olympia, where she actually was scheduled to do this. So bear with us. I give you Mama Charlotte O'Neill. Nashikur Sana, and in Kiswahili, I say, Hamjambo. Yes. I'm sorry too, Dada. Now, Shakur Sana Kusakia Kiswahili Yako. Hey, yeah. So, for y'all who didn't know what we were saying, I'll say good morning to you. And I'm happy to be here. And I was thrilled that Dr. Arunga gave me permission to make this film. And it was made with um, some of the people in my community in Tanzania, we live in a village called Embassani Village. I don't know if anybody's been to Tanzania before. Kenya? Well, we're in Arusha, so that's right across the border. And we live in a village about an hour outside of Arusha. So I hope I do have uh, time to say more later, but right now we're gonna roll the film. And it's called Wareje Aji. Huh? which means those who have returned based on Dr. Arunga's book, The Stolen Ones and How They Were Missed. Enjoy, y'all. In the year 2000, a group of African-American women from the USA went to visit Kenya, East Africa. As they sat in the backyard of their hostess, many women came to greet the African-Americans who had traveled to the homeland of their ancestors. As they sat together, the African-American women shared stories and photos of their family and community. One of the elders said, you call yourselves African-Americans, but where in Africa do you come from? The African-American women laughed and said, well, we do not know exactly where we come from. Sadly, we are not able to all trace our exact origins like Alex Haley. The elder looked with a glimmer of light and recognition as she declared, oh, you must be the stolen ones. The stolen ones, you say, who are they? We asked, and the elder 
began to tell the story. Long ago in Africa, there lived a beautiful girl named Nia. Her beauty came not only from her lovely face and smile, but also from her kind heart. Nia was always thinking of others. She was loved and admired by all in the village for the way she walked, always with purpose and intention in her life. And that was the meaning of her name, Nia, which means purpose. Nia had many gifts and talents, and one of them was her gardening skills. She made the soil in her garden rich and fertile. In Kiswahili, the garden is called Shamba. And in Nia Shamba, seeds were planted with care and attention, and the crops were plentiful and nutritious. All year long, Nia harvested big, juicy pawpaw from her tall pawpaw trees. The pawpaw from her trees grew very big, sweet, Juicy and luscious. Mm. She also grew my embe from tall trees that gave the sweetest fruit in all the land. The, her younger brothers love the delicious taste of my embe. Watch them grow big and strong from its sweet, sweet taste. Mmm, Tamu. There were in Daisy bananas, and everyone loved to pop those little fruits in their mouths as they enjoyed the delicious, sweet taste. Nia also grew machungwa oranges. In Nia's garden, my chungwa had a green-colored peel, but inside, they were filled with a sweet, succulent juice. Like all of Nia's crops, these fruits grew larger than any in the land and were always the most popular at the big market in the nearby village. In Nia's village, people lived together in harmony. Families were healthy and strong, and food was abundant, and the granaries were full. People shared in the goodwill of the village. Children played happily while adults worked together, drummed and sang, and the elders were wise and loving. They advised people in the village on matters that they believed would keep peace and prosperity among them. And the children learned many lessons from watching their elders. One harvest, Nia grew more sweet and succulent fruit than ever before. The people in her village were called together to join in the celebration of Nia's harvest. They admired her crops and praised her for her hard work. 
They acknowledge her kind heart and her willingness to help others. They ask that abundant blessings be received by Nia. Many people gather to dance, play games, and celebrate a prosperous harvest. Before everyone shared in a feast, the people gathered for Tambico, that's libation to honor their ancestors. They poured water on the ground as a sign of respect to those who had come before them. When they acknowledged their ancestors, they called the names of their grandparents, their great-grandparents, and all of their ancestors until they called back many generations. They prayed for the common good of their village and for Nia's safe journey and quick sale of her fruits. When the party ended, Nia prepared for her safari journey to the big marketplace. This journey would take her many hours on foot. Nia used the biggest kikapu basket that had been in her family for many generations. She took special care of the kikapu because she knew just as her grandfather had, she would pass it to her own grandchild one day. Nia practiced so many times carrying the big kikapu on her head when she was a little child. She knew that this was the best way to carry heavy things. She tried and she tried and finally Nia was able. And for long distances such as this journey, Nia knew that carrying the kikapu on top of her head would be the most suitable. And after much practice, Nia learned to walk with straight posture. Her whole body walked balanced and centered. This way she could go for the long distance to the market. The Soconi Marketplace was filled with a lot of activity and excitement. Everyone was happy to see Nia again. They loved her beautiful smile and her warm heart. And customers knew that her fruits would be a big treat. Nia's fruits sold quickly. She took time to share stories and laugh with friends before she began her return home. The money that Nia received in exchange for her goods were called cowrie shells. This was a common kind of money in Africa. And on this journey, Nia was so successful selling her fruits that she received many cowrie shells in exchange for them. She thought of how the next harvest would be her best ever and how proud her family would be of her success. She could not wait to return home. When Nia was halfway home, she heard brushing sounds in the bushes. But when she turned around to look, she did not see anything. So she continued her journey. Then she heard footsteps behind her. But when she turned around to see again, and it was so dark, it was lonely on this road, but she took heart. She heard that sound again. Where is it coming from? She didn't see anything. But when she turned around once more, strange men in red rushed toward her and captured her by force. But before she could run or scream for help, they grabbed her by her hands and feet and tied them with a rope. She fought and tried to pull away, but they were very strong. They pulled and dragged Nia for days to the edge of the land where the ocean was. Woo! <laughs> 
Mia was thrown into a dark, cold dungeon where she was filled with grief and fear. Mia heard many voices around her. People were speaking in languages that she did not recognize. <laughs> she struggled to see who they were and where the voices came from. But all she could see was darkness. She realized she was in an awful place and was terrified and longed to see her mother and father who awaited her arrival home. Oh, she hoped they would find her and rescue her from the cold, dark dungeon. Nia was shattered at the thought that she may not get back home to her family, to her land, and to her garden. Due to grief and shock from having been stolen, Nia lost count of the days, but one thing she knew, she was determined to stay alive and find her way back home. Many days had passed, and still Nia did not know where she was or how to free herself. <sighs> Meanwhile, in Nia's village, a few days had passed and Nia's parents got very worried. They called together the men in the village and organized a search party. From house to house and village to village, the men searched everywhere for Nia, their lost daughter, but they could not find her anywhere. They even went to the edge of the land where the ocean waters were, but they did not know that ships had come to take Nia and many others away. After several months of looking, the search party returned home to tell Nia's family that she could not be found. They declared that she must be dead. Nia's family mourned her death with deep sorrow. They cried and cried and spent many days remembering the special gifts she had and the life that she filled in the village with her loving heart and her brilliant talents. For years, the elders of the village would gather to discuss the loss of so many people who had disappeared from their homes just as Nia had. One day, a traveler passing by the village told how he had seen big ships passing through the ocean. He said that many of the young people who had disappeared from the village were taken away and placed onto the ships. He declared that they were not dead, but instead they were stolen. He explained that people had been forced to board those horrible ships never to be seen again. People thought of all those who had gone missing, the children, the hunters, the healers, Nia, Nia. During that time, so many people were stolen from their homes. When the village gathers to honor their ancestors, they always remember the stolen ones. Today, we call that time the Mafa tragedy. Tragedy. Where have they gone? Wanna talk a wapi? Where have they gone? Wanna talk a wapi?
Years had passed and Nia had grown old and feeble in the new land. She called together the two children whom she had raised. She told her children, I am old now and will die soon. I want you to remember that you live in this land, but your home is in Africa. Tell your children to tell their children to tell their children until one day we will find our way back home. And as the elder finished telling this story, she declared, You, you all are the stolen ones return. Kari Boney, please can I bless you as daughters of Africa come back, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. When the seven women from America heard the story of Nia, they learned that Nia was not only the ancestor of the African homeland, she was their ancestor too. They had believed that no one cared their ancestors were gone. Uh, not only were they missed, but they have a special place in the African family. And since that day, the women from America vowed to continue reconnecting with their long lost family in Africa. Together, they would build Mother Africa, the ancestral homeland of Nia, who is the ancestor that they share. Um, I just feel so honored that Mama C has uh, created this piece of work and it's like a second generation. It's like when you have a grandchild. So you did, you know, I didn't have to give birth to it. It's now giving birth beyond me. And that feeling is just amazing. So I would like to present Mama C up on the stage and, um, 
If you have any questions to ask her or me, feel free. This would be the time. We're going to be so brief, maybe one or two, and then we will move on to a give. We'll ask her to play her instrument. Then we'll do a give back. Does that sound good? All right. Uh, question and answer first. Um, question and answers. But you can come and take your seat. You'll stay there for the duration. <laughs> they want you to play first. <laughs> All right. This is a Nyatiti, and it comes from the Luo community, the Luo tribe in Kenya. Kenya is right next to Tanzania, in case y'all don't know. Look it up on the map. And uh, this was actually taboo for women to play for many, many years, but now several of us play it. And uh, this is a hollowed out piece of wood. And uh, you can see in there that it's hollowed out. And it's covered with uh, cow skin. So when it dries, it's a percussive instrument also. I play it as a drum on this side. Uh, it has eight strings, so in Kiswahili we say it's kambanane, and uh, it's a lyre, L-Y-R-E, as opposed to a harp, because a harp has just one neck. A lyre has two arms and a cross piece, and you tune it with these tuning rings right here. So um, I'm going to share a song with y'all, and I would love for y'all to join in at some point, huh? because it's a song about us wanting to change the world and make it a better place, huh? And uh, we who want to do this, I call us the knowers. Are y'all knowers? Yes, yes, yes. So that means you gotta sing your part very loudly. All right? Okay, here we go. That's what this sound hole is for, I guess. Yeah. What do you say? You a knower too? <laughs> y'all gonna sing. Now I'm, I'm gonna sing it one more time and then we're gonna sing it with enthusiasm. We walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, the way of the new world. Come on y'all. We walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, the way of the new world. We walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, the way a new world, the way a new world, the way a new world. Dr. Arunga, you think they need to sing it one more time? Yeah, because I can't hear y'all. Now, if you really mean it, you got to shout it out. Uh, you got the universe, you want to let the universe know that you mean it, that you want to change the world. 
you want to make it a better place. Where's that little baby up here? See, he's walking already. Huh? He's feeling it. Yeah, you feeling it, brother. Come on, y'all. Here we go now. Uh. We walk, we walk. We walk, we walk. We walk, we walk. The well new one more time. Hey. We walk, we walk. We walk, we walk. We walk, we walk. The well new world. The well new world. The well new world. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Change the world, y'all. Spread peace, love, and blessings. That's the way we change it. And if you have gardening skills, that helps change it too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. It's my complete pleasure. This is for question and answers. Anyone? Or comments? I sure would like to know how they feel about this. Yeah, Not it, only the book, but the okay, film also. Now, now she wants to know how you felt about it. Okay. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I really enjoy your colors first. Thank you. Your, thank you. your outfit and uh, the way, uh, the vibe of your presence. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and the film was amazing. I have seen the book. I knew about it. So I heard the story. So to see it in film, it actually kind of brings it and makes you to be part of it and be there. Yes. And, you know, the, the stolen ones, uh, when we think about, we all know, you know, the, I'm from Africa and, you know, sometimes even countries like in Africa that don't even know the history of what the stolen ones are yes. or the slavery. Yes. And you will assume that since you're in Africa, Everybody in Africa should know about the stolen ones, let's say, per se. So this, I'm hoping that the film, many young people who might not know the story will see. Yes. So it will actually serve a purpose bigger than maybe what we even anticipated. Yes. So thank you so much for doing it. I appreciate that. Thank you, sister. And, that, and that's the plan, to, to make good. sure that as many people as possible see the film, read the book and have questions and answers. We need this. Yeah. That helps a healing take place. Yes, it does. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Here's somebody, Dr. Arango. I was just curious about the um, music that was played in the film. Mm -hmm. It sounded to my ear very American, but I was wondering if it was traditional um, African music or... Well, you know, no matter what instrument I play, that was me drumming also. I did the whole soundtrack. And for, for those who know Kiswahili, you can see that I was mixing English and Kiswahili. But sister, I was born in Kansas City, and I have blues in my blood. And yeah, and no matter if I play near Titi, or Obokano, or Kamala Ngoni, or when I sing, that blues is going to come out. And, you know, that's part of me as an African woman, an African woman who was born in the diaspora, and I lived here for 19 years, always surrounded by blues and jazz and gospel, huh? So I embrace all that, and I embody that, along with my African music. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Thanks for writing. You're a musician? Yes. I'm not. But you know. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You like this? <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just want to say that the music um, always has its roots, its thread from its origin. Mm -hmm. So even when we think about um, jazz and, and gospel and hip hop, especially hip hop, and the rhythms that are used, they actually have their origin in Africa. Mm -hmm. So you know, we, and it, the, the best thing is to know that. Yeah. Because I think African Americans take it for granted. It's like, just like she said, 19 years of growing up around it, you don't even think, well, where did it come from? And actually it came from um, Africa. The language may be changed, 
but even the way the rhythm is used, the syncopation, the movement of, uh, of the instrument, all of that is still having its roots in, in the African origin. So it's a beautiful, beautiful idea. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. Um, I just want to thank you for putting her book into a film. Yeah. Um, it's really beautiful to be able to catch, for, capture the story through visual. And I also love your instrument and how it just captivate, captivated my son ever since he heard it. He's yeah. been wanting to be up here. Um, it's very... <laughs> yeah, uh, get down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Uh, yeah, thank you. It's just, it's very beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate I think I know who his favorite person is in the world. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. I'm interested to know the name of this instrument one more time, and I also wanted to say thank you for your performance as well as the... S say it one more time. You're interested to know... The name of this instrument. Okay. And it's called a nyaktiti, and it comes from... A, that's a Luo word, and it, and it comes from the Luo tribe or Luo community, Luo. and that's in Kenya. Luo in Kenya. Luo, L-U-O. And, and it's spelled Nyatiti, N-Y-A-T-I-T-I. -I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if y'all want to contact me, uh, you can contact me at our center's website, uaacc.net. UAACC stands for United African Alliance Community Center, and we welcome people from all over the world. If you got a skill to share, you want to intern or volunteer, Kari Booney, that means welcome. That's mm -hmm. the plural of welcome, uh, the plural of Kari Booney. Yeah. Kari Booney, y'all. Mm -hmm. Oh, I <laughs> wanted to tell you also this instrument, um, the Luo people is the same tribe as Pre President Obama's ancestors. And so this instrument actually has its origin in Nile, the Nile Valley. Mm -hmm. Those are people who migrated up the Nile, because it's up the Nile, not down the Nile, right? Into the Sudan, into, Egypt, into um, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania. So there are Luos in Kenya and Luos in Tanzania as well. And this is their indigenous instrument. So it's called Nyatiti, and it is played like if you are typically in a club, in a nightclub, or um, having family entertainment, then um, somebody will pull out Nyatiti. And they actually play exactly the way Mama Charlotte was playing, and then they'll stop, and they'll tell a story. And then everybody will laugh, because it's always a joke, and they'll all laugh, and then he'll, the person will go back to playing the, the same uh, rhythm. So it's an ongoing rhythm. It could go on all night, and it's part of the entertainment that gathers the people together. And traditionally, it's played on the ground, like this. Yes. And then you have an iron ring on your toe. play it up like this now. But when I first learned, I learned to play close to Mother Earth. Yes. Hello. Thank you Hello. for visiting again. I always love when the visitors come. It's always fun and interesting. Um, I just have a question. Where, do you live in Washington now? In what part of Africa did you live um, I and how long? I live in Tanzania, that's in East Africa, right next to Kenya, and I've lived there with my husband, Pete O'Neill, since 1972. So that, and I was there 20 years before I came back to the States. So that is definitely home, but because I also have roots here, 
you know, I'm able to visit my family. I'm on tour right now. I tour uh, every year from February to May, to the beginning of May, and uh, then I go home. Nice. So I spread the word about our work. I endeavor to inspire people and let y'all know you can do it too. Okay, nice. Yeah. Uh, do, do you have <laughs> one more question? Do you have like a website or anything? That... Yes. Oh. U a a c c dot net, or you can Google my name, Charlotte O'Neill. I'm also on Facebook. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Now we are down to the last five minutes, and then we got to go. So if you have, um, oh, this is give back, okay? Mm -hmm. Mama Charlotte has not experienced give back. Your comments have been helpful, but Mama Charlotte, give back is a time when you have given so much already to the audience. We're now asking students to give back to you what you have heard, what you've learned that you might take with you, what struck you in this presentation? Hi, I just want to thank you for personalizing a story that I've heard, but never, never to that degree. So making it more heartfelt for us over here. Um, on the other side. So thank you. Thank you for sharing your music. It's wonderful. Yes. Uh, thank you for your music. It was wonderful. And to my ears, it was like stereophonic sound because throughout there were the women's voices all around me. That was a wonderful production that you have and your Film. Yeah, thank you. Good job. Thank you. Um, I want again. I wanted to again say thank you for showing us another way of going after our dreams and telling the story of our ancestors, so we can change the future. That's Sankofa, isn't it? True Sankofa moment. I just want to say thank you. Uh, I grew up with my father playing the guitar in the driveway and just sitting there in awe. And so he's, that's how he's always told his stories and expressed himself is through his music. So it just, I sat in awe staring at you the same way I stared at my father. And I thank you for that. Good memory. It's responses like this that even deepen what our presenters give to us when they come to our learning community so that people can see the distinctiveness of a story and the storytelling, but also can walk in to the introduction, the middle, the ending, and walk away even better. And that's what you have done with your art. Let's give her another hand right now. Yeah. It, 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 it gives us hope, just like the song said. It shows us the world of art to translate, to meet, to find sisterhood, to share, and to give us a platform to step out on when sometimes we feel like there is no platform at all. And that's the role of art, and that's what you did for us. So thank you for your shining example. You are definitely a cycle maker, cycle breaker. Yes, she is. Thank you. I had no idea that Sankofa was y'all's uh, y'all's emblem, but yes. I, I love this this Sankofa, and I also have a Janyami, which means the Creator is everywhere. This is also an Andinkra symbol. So, y'all got it going on here. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you to come. Yes. Oh, what an honor. Thank you, Dr. Arunga. Yes. Thank you. Oh.